Hi, everybody. I'm here with Medea Benjamin from Code Pink. And uh, so look at this headline. Record inflation hits European Union countries as sanctions against Russia kick in. <laughs> so, again, everything. It's like we have Gomer Pyle in charge of our foreign policy. Everything the Biden administration and NATO is doing is backfiring. It's not hurting Russia. It's not hurting China. It's hurting Europe and it's hurting the United States. And now all, all the other countries are now forming other economic alliances against us because of the belligerence and the saber rattling and the war mongering and the imperialism of the United States, NATO in the West. And so this is another sign. Of, so now we're trying to do sanctions on Russia. You can't. Russia's going to sell their oil. They're going to sell it to anyway. So record inflation hits European Union countries as sanctions against Russia kick in. Macron says he can count on Z to bring Russia, Ukraine to the negotiating table. So that's the president of France relying on China to bring peace in Ukraine, not the United States, China. Again, another story showing you how every uh, United States is losing. This is what they said Trump was going to do, that he was going to make all our friends leave us and start other partnerships and we would lose our influence around the world. That's exactly what Joe Biden's administration is making sure happens. I know I can count on you to bring Russia to its sense and bring everyone back to the negotiating table, Macron said. We need to find a lasting peace. I believe that this is also an important issue for China as much as it is for France and for Europe. Following talks with Macron, Xi said China and France should work together to push for a political solution to end the war and avoid steps that would escalate the conflict. China is willing to call on the international community, along with France, to maintain rationality and restraint and avoid taking actions that will further escalate the crisis or make it out of control, Xi said. Macron made the trip to China with Ursula von der Leyen, the European Union's commissioned president. Von der Leyen said that Z expressed a willingness to speak with Ukrainian President Zelensky and said a conversation could happen when conditions in the time are right. Z emerged as a potential mediator between Russia and Ukraine after China released a 12-point peace plan for the conflict, and he traveled to Moscow to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Zelensky has maintained maximalist demands as preconditions for peace talks, but expressed an openness to China's proposal and wants to speak with Z. Now, you know, our, th our feeling at this show is that Zelensky wants peace. He would do peace, but he's being pressured by NATO, the West and the extreme right wing in his own country to not do it. And they're threatening him with death if he does. Right. So I have a little bit, a little sympathy to him. Do you think that he actually ran on a peace p platform? He ran on bringing the country back together and he won overwhelmingly. And then as soon as they, uh, they, they start. Go ahead. Do you think he's the one that leaked that thing that leaked today? What leaked today? About their battle capabilities. You see that news? No, no, no. It's a very, uh, it's very strange. Yeah. All right, let me finish this. President Biden has taken much different approach to China's calls for peace by immediately rejecting the idea as Beijing as the mediator. Ahead of Xi's trip to Moscow, the White House came out against calls for a ceasefire. Do you... Could it be any clear? Of course, they're never Rachel Maddow, Sean Hannity. They're never going to tell you this. They're never going to tell you it like this, by the way. So uh, so they say he failed. So this is how it's being reported that Macron failed to move Xi Jinping over Russia war in Ukraine. They're calling this a failure because uh, at a press conference, Macron called Xi's to unequivocally condemn Russia, but he openly ignored the idea. This means that the parties remained at their side during the negotiations. So they're saying that that is a failure of Macron to move China. The face of failure, Macron lectures China during a diplomatic visit while protests rage over his pro-banker neoliberal policies. Xi Jinping will ignore Macron and build a multipolar world with or without France and the U.S. European stooges. So that's what's really going on. Danny Haifon gets it right. And then while Macron is visiting China, protesters set fire to his favorite restaurant in Paris. <laughs> At the Rotunda <laughs> restaurant in Paris, Macron celebrated his victory and still periodically visits there and they burn it down. <laughs> Jeez. So what do you what do you make of uh, <coughs> Macron and uh they're saying he failed with China and China's uh, piece of ideas. Well, it's so funny that, you know, to say he failed because uh, she didn't come out and condemn Russia. Right. But yet 
they want China to be a mediator. So if you're going to meet, be a mediator, uh, you got to be a diplomat. And that's exactly what China is doing right now. I think, you know, the U.S. is just per, uh, apoplectic that China is now playing a role in the Saudi Iran uh, negotiations coming together, does not want China to be a peacemaker on the world stage. And so, you know, is trying to sabotage these Chinese um, talks. And Macron, to go over there, you know, I think it's a good thing. I think it's good to, to be talking. Anytime people are talking peace together, that's a good thing. But he should, uh, it, it should be obvious that if China is going to mediate, China's got to be in between both, has to have a good relationship with Putin. And Zelensky is anxious to talk to Xi. And she said that when the time is right, they will talk. In fact, there were supposed to be talks and I can't, uh, they were put off for a while, but they'll, they will happen. So I think we all have to get behind, not just the Chinese, because it shouldn't be one country. You know, we talked about Lula, but there's others. There's, uh, you know, the UN has played a great role. The Secretary General, the Pope has uh, uh, called for a, a ceasefire. Uh, you know, when the Pope called for a ceasefire, uh, we at Code Pink work with this group Fellowship of Reconciliation. We got 1,500 faith-based leaders around this country to call for a truce. So, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that uh, are, are looking towards leadership uh, for a truce, and uh, the Chinese can play a good role in that. Uh what do you, I, don't, I think that the, if the American people knew that there was their own government that was getting in the way of peace while sending hundreds of billions of dollars there, I think they would they would rise up. I think they would do something about it. I think they would start confronting their politicians. But they don't know this. They 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 won't be told this again. You're never invited on MSNBC, CNN, or anywhere else, and they're not going to certainly be told this in the Washington Post, which is in bed with the CIA and is for all these wars. Um, uh, I just hope that people like you and uh, people like this show, we can reach enough people to actually get to turn the tide on this. But well, that would be great. And and Jimmy, uh, I just want people to also know that there is something called Peace in Ukraine dot org. It's a coalition. They can go to it online and they can join it. We only meet one hour every two weeks to talk about these things, give each other ideas. There's lots of resources on there. Uh, and you can join as an individual or as an organization. So there are things that people can do, and we really need a lot more people. And you reach so many of them that uh, we would love your folks to join us. What's the, what is the website? Peaceinukraine.org. Peaceinukraine.org. And you have an hour meeting once every two weeks? Yep. And a listserv that's got lots of uh, different opinions floating around, but gives people good ideas. And, and we do... Regular, we do protests, we do webinars, we do uh, letters to the editor, we do uh, get get out to your farmer's market and talk to people. You know, we have lots of ideas about ways that people can get involved in your own hometown or you can come to Washington and join us. Come join me in one of those hearings and uh, get your frustration out when some of these war hawks are testifying. Yeah, that would be great. Go to jimmydoor.com to see my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny. For only $10, you get to become a premium member, too. And come see us do our live shows. We're going to be doing stand-up comedy in Milwaukee, Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, New York, Coho's, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Maryland, and more. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm.